Welcome to the Beverly Hills Plastic Surgery Podcast. I'm Dr. Jay Calvert. I am here today with the, just the, the goat of breast implants. Mm. I'm telling you, this is Dr. Millicent Ravello. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. Thank you. And you are the goat when it comes to these remove and replace this disasters. Disaster. <laughs> <laughs> this is your game. I mean, I, I do breast implants and I just take out the breast and implants. I so put them pretty. in and they're so pretty and yeah. I'm, you know, nice little skinny people and I just put them in and take it's them like, out. Oh, and, they're so nice. Oh, that looks great. <laughs> you, you go through a, the Chernobyl of breast implant remove and replace. You are, you are yeah. in, in the war zone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they. I don't get the easy ones. <laughs> no, you I would don't. love the BMI of twenty who just wants you know some nice D's and never had any kids and it just it, it sounds great. No, I get the like, yeah. So these have been in for about twenty or thirty years. I don't know. It, should one of them be sitting up by my collarbone? And I got an MRI that said one is ruptured, and I kind of want to have them look like they used to when I was twenty. And what do you say, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and I've gained 84 pounds <laughs> since then, but you, I know you can do it. So this is the Removal and Replacement Podcast. Uh, we are talking about breast implants, otherwise known as a secondary augmentation or a revision augmentation. And obviously this can take you know various forms. Everyone comes with different breast implants, different body habitus, but it, body styles, different desires. But the gist is someone who's already had breast implants and wants to keep their breast implants, but needs them updated. Yeah. And, and it is a challenge because it's not the same as putting in breast implants in somebody who's never had any device in their body. It is, it is very different. It's a different operation. It requires more attention to what's gone on in the past and how the patient has healed and what the issues are now. For whatever reason, this patient who has breast implants is now back saying, I need to update these. Could be from anything to, well, they've just been in too long. I, I think that the manufacturer recommended that I change them out. I think that I don't really like the way that the breast tissue is hanging off the implant because I've gotten older, the breasts have gotten saggy or they just don't look good anymore, they're encapsulated. There's a whole host whole, of reasons. So many reasons, they're too big, they're too small. I've had kids, I've breastfed. Like there's all kinds of reasons why women need to have their breast implants updated. And I think it would be really comprehensive and challenging to go through every single one of those reasons. Um, so we're gonna keep it kind of broad. And then, you know, we have different podcasts like for specific things, but I think with a few exceptions, the most important thing to know about a revision breast augmentation is that it's going to be more time consuming, it's going to be a longer recovery, and it's going to be more expensive than your first time around. So if the first time around you were 20-something, you had your implants placed, you were sore for a couple days, you bounced right back, you were in your bikini at the beach in two weeks, it's not going to be like that the second time around. Every once in a while. Someone who's kind of small-breasted, maybe hasn't had their implants in for too long, doesn't want to make any big changes, maybe, you know, you can do something simple. But in my case, that's like 5% of my removal and replacements. Yeah. Typically, the patient's body has changed. Yes. They've, they may have had children. They mm -hmm. may have had, uh, they may have breastfed those children. Uh, the the uh, implant may be in a position that's not awesome because mm -hmm. of muscular contractures. There may be things that have happened that there may have been some trauma along the way with a you know, motor vehicle accident or something that could have caused an encapsulation or they're both encapsulated. Or they've ruptured. There are so many things that can go on. And so to talk about remove and replace, we just need to kind of explain to expect that this is a bigger deal than it sounds. It sounds yeah. like it's going to be a chip shot. Oh, we're just going to, you know, take these out and put new ones in. That's not really the case. It's not really the case. So we can go through it just a few examples just to explain like why that wouldn't be the case. And I think going from sort of the most simple to the most complex, maybe you come in and you haven't gained weight, lost weight, had kids, but you just want to change the size. Maybe they are too big. Maybe they're too small. So you want to change the size. 
if you want to go bigger, that's usually a little bit simpler because we still have to do work on the inside. The inside is called the capsule. It's sort of this fibrous scar band that surrounds the implant. It's normal. It's supposed to be there. But you have to usually make adjustments for it if you're changing the size of the implant because it forms around the size of the current implant. So if you want to go bigger, you got to adjust that capsule to allow it to expand. If you want to go smaller, that's a much bigger undertaking. It's much easier to go bigger. It's much harder to go smaller. Not only do you have to adjust the capsule to make it smaller, and that usually involves putting in sutures and kind of literally sew sewing it into a different size, you usually have to do something with the skin as well because the skin is used to being at a certain size. And if you're trying to downsize it, you got to take some extra skin in the form of a lift. So going smaller is usually a lot more complicated than going larger. And that is the most simple of exchanges. More extensive would be somebody that has capsular contracture. So if that same capsule that's usually kind of thin and filmy and cobwebby has become thick and hard, that's called capsular contracture. And the treatment for that is to remove the whole capsule and then replace the implant. And removing the whole capsule can be a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. The, the capsulectomy, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you, Unfortunately, there was a surgeon somewhere in this country where one of the places I've trained who every single one of his patients got super hard capsules. Hmm. And so the patients thought that's how they were supposed to be. <laughs> so when they would get their implants, if they didn't get hard and firm and, and like rocks on their chest, they thought there was something wrong. <laughs> That's, That's not, not how, how they're, they're supposed, supposed to be. be. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how they're supposed to be. But removing, but to treat it, you have to remove it. And removal is, you know, an extra time in the OR. Oh, yeah. You're going to have a drain afterwards. It's going to take longer to recover. There's higher risks of complications. And it can totally be done. All these things can totally be done. But it just is an extra layer of surgery, an extra layer of recovery that you have to take into account. And the same thing for a ruptured implant. You have to do a full capsulectomy if you have a ruptured implant as well. Yeah, and capsulectomies are tricky because oftentimes you are taking out most of the support tissue for mm -hmm. the implant. And so reconstructing the breast pocket, I, and I always say this when, uh, when I'm teaching the fellows and the residents breast augmentation, I said this operation should not be called breast augmentation. It should be called breast pocket control because the implant is almost incidental to the success of the, of the, the operation because right. you, you want to make a pocket that's going to have long-term success with, that's going to provide positioning for the implant for cleavage and for the right size. And it doesn't get in the way of your arm when you're trying to, you know, do, you know, bent over rows on the, on the bench. And so there's a lot that goes into controlling the pocket. And then when you do a capsulectomy, you've just Taken away, it, you've taken away, it. yeah, yeah, it's gone. So gone. the pocket's now gone and you have either tissue under the, the, uh, the pectoralis major muscle or it's subglandular or subfascial or whatever it is that is now without control. And our job at that point is to control the inframammary fold, to control the lateral excursion of the implant and to make the cleavage out of what's there from the, the pec or from the subfascial or subglandular position. And it is, it is complex. It is complex um, because frequently what happens when you take that whole capsule out is you enlarge in, is that even a word? You enlarge. <laughs> I love the, that word. Enlarge you in, enlarge in the you pocket. You enlarge in the pocket. You, this it's, pocket it's now next becomes. next to the boxing of implants that we have in the uh, back there the too. <laughs> Shout uh, out to, to our, Brian our good Regan. Brian, Brian Regan. <laughs> love, love that. Um, yeah, so if the patient doesn't want to be larger. There are 12 boxing of implants. Sorry, I just can we, can we continue? I'm going to just keep going on that one. <laughs> I have to, you know, it's right there. You know, my son is doing the uh, the cameras tonight he with is. the, uh, and and I know right now he's back there going like I told him not to make dad jokes. He, literally, what he's saying. He did, and he's saying it as as we're doing this right this minute. I know he is. So can we stop with the dad jokes then? Are we done? Okay. Okay. Thank I'm, you. I'm ready to go forward okay, now. Thanks. Keep going. <laughs> the pocket is now large, and so you have to do something to fix it. And the other thing that I've noticed a lot after capsulectomies is that the fold, the IMF, that um, sort of, it's the fold under the breast, it separates the breast from the abdomen. It really takes a beating after a capsulectomy. And if you don't reinforce that fold and put it back together, you're going to have big problems when you go to put in your second implant because it's going to just 
not be supported. So that's something just you have to keep in mind. I always you know, tell the young surgeons as well, if he's on a capsulectomy, check that fold. You're probably going to have to reinforce it. And this is all very technical stuff, um, not necessarily applicable to the patients that are interested in a removal and replacement, but it's all just to illustrate that the second time around is a lot more complex than the first time around. And a lot of times they don't understand that when they come in. They just think that they're going to, you know, swap them in, swap them out. And then when you explain that it's going to, you're going to have to do this and you're going to have drains, you're going to have to have a longer recovery. Oh, and by the way, here's your price quote. And it's a little bit of a sticker shock because that's not what they cost it's the first time typically around. typically double plus, I think. Yeah. yeah, but you know, the thing is, is the, the, it's not to say that you shouldn't do it. It's just that you should understand what it is. Totally. Yeah, I mean, you, you should do it because there's a lot of reasons to keep... I always think with breast implants that if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but don't wait till it is broke <laughs> because then the fix becomes much Way harder. Bigger. Right? And so let's talk about that because this is a question that I'm sure you get a lot as well. Um, so it's been 10 years, doctor, and I need to have my implants replaced. Where does that come from? So let's talk about that because we get that a lot. Patients hear that after 10 years, they have to have their breast implants replaced. But do they? Well, well, we'll talk about it. Well, that's what I'm asking. Back in the day, back in the day, the FDA, Federal Drug Administration, had recommendations that implants should be swapped out. The food. Right, not even the federal, the food, the, food and drug. Why they're, they're federal anyway. I don't know anyway. why they're up in our implants, but they are. The why FDA. are they up in our, our implants? I don't know. <laughs> they see how many boxes of implants we have, and then they're like, we need mm. to we need to regulate need to control this. control that. Totally. So they have, you know, they say after 10 years, implants should be replaced because after 10 years, um, they're at a higher risk of rupture. And as we just talked about, if you have a rupture, it is a much bigger procedure and an issue. And back in the day, ruptured implants were a big problem because that old silicone from back in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s was very gooey, very runny. When those implants ruptured, they would go into the lymph nodes, they would go into the breast tissue, and it was. It's a problem. So they said, before they rupture, swap them out. Well, time has gone on, our implants have improved significantly so that even if the newer generation of implants rupture, that gel is not going to go anywhere. It's not going to leak into the breast tissue. It's not going to go into your lymph nodes. You won't even know it's ruptured unless you get an imaging study. It's going to stay contained in its little shell. That's why they call them gummy bear implants. Not all implants are gummy bear. That's a trademark brand. But if you conceptualize that gel as a gummy bear, if you cut a gummy bear in half, that gel is going to just stay in its little shell. It's not going to go anywhere. It's called cohesive. It's, it's a cohesive gel. And so when they rupture, it's not as sticky, literally. Also, current implants have 20-year warranties against rupture. That's how long the companies believe they should last before they would even consider thinking about them rupturing. So the FDA is really behind on their recommendations. If a company says that their implants are good for 20 years, why are we swapping them out at 10 years? You don't have to. But like you said, if you're getting close to 20 years, you might want to think about swapping them out, even if you're not having any issues, because you don't want to push that limit and potentially have a problem. Yeah, I think I think when you start to see them changing, this is this is kind of my. It's kind of like when do you get a facelift? Well, when you start when you see lo- looking old yeah. and you need a facelift, exactly. right? Then you start seeing jowls on your cheeks and you look. You need a facelift. When the breast implants start to not look so great anymore, they're not the right size. Their their shape isn't exactly right. They start to hurt a little bit. Something is telling you, hey, time for a tune up. This is a medical device like a like a heart valve or a, a hip uh, replacement implant. At some point, they they wear out. They're not designed to be lifelong no. devices. And usually, um, what I tell people is that you're probably going to have these implants swapped out before 20 years for time, age, gravity reasons. You want a bigger size, smaller size. You've aged. Gravity has done its worst. For some aesthetic reason, you're going to probably have these implants swapped out before the implant itself fails. Um, and I 
I think that's pretty much a, a good piece of advice. And this is probably an, a, a podcast that people who are even thinking about a primary breast augmentation should listen to. Sure. Because I try and tell the new breast implantation breast implant patients all of this information as well that like these are not designed to be lifelong devices you are going to have to maintain them or exchange them over the course of your life and you can always take them out but it's not going to look as great as you know when you have them in necessarily so things to consider when you're thinking about that very first primary breast augmentation yeah, I always tell people that are getting breast implants is that it, it, this is a medical device. It's not not lifelong. It, it may require, it's going to require more surgery, mm -hmm. um, but the surgery is subcutaneous. You know, a breast is a skin gland. It's not a, you know, it's not intra-abdominal. It's not intra-thoracic. At least we try not to make it intra-thoracic, which I've heard about in it other happens. places. It does happen, it but... Uh, not at the Roxbury Clinic and Surgery Center. <laughs> so, uh, But these are all things that you have to consider. I mean, plastic surgery is really safe. It's really effective. We're really good at what we do. Removal and replacements do turn out. But, you know, then there are things like, what if the scar isn't great? You know, what if you have to do a lift and now you've got an anchor scar that you needed? There's there's just there's a layers. lot to consider. You yeah. need to you need to have an awesome surgeon first of all. That that's really key. Somebody that's going to make good decisions about what to do for your removal and replacement. And you do want somebody who makes them turn out. You know yeah. that that's a thing because I I know like what you do with these women that have you know gained a lot of weight and have very long breasts from age and then the, they're just, they're really hard cases. They're really they're really hard. hard. Yeah. I, I mean, they're, those cases, like I, I'm, you know, kudos to you for, you know, really staying with them and, and, and working your butt off to get them the best result. But I think you probably do like I do and tell them you might need two operations to make this look awesome. You might, yeah. you might need a, a redo on the skin. You might need something else. These, you know, and, and the, the weight loss patient is a whole nother yeah. game. Yeah. You know, it's a whole nother game, which uh, is why I published that lateral breast flap. <laughs> Consider it. It works. Um, but those patients are a whole nother animal also. I mean, what I'm doing, I have this population of fitness uh, women that are, you know, for whatever reason have, uh, they see what I do with, with, you know, thin people with, you know, 400 cc and up implants they come because they really want to keep the, the cleavage and keep their, their inframammary folds intact and still be able to handle like the capsule or the fact that the implant's been moved by the fact that they do, you know, bench press of, of significant weights and things that, that cause malposition of implants. That's a whole nother game too. And, and yeah. so you kind of got to look at the before and afters, as we've said over and over again on this podcast, look at the before and afters, find the surgeon that works for you, you know, obviously, you know, we, we think we're pretty great at this stuff, but, you know, but everybody, not everybody lives by us. So you everybody gotta, has a different <laughs> look. You know, like totally. I, I, which, you know, you, so that, that's why you look at the before and afters and, and look at what you like. Because if I'm redoing someone's breasts, they usually end up a lot higher and perkier than they started out with because that's a look I like. That's but I your have, thing. I have had patients come in and, and they, they missed their kind of old saggy breasts and their saggy breast implants. And they're like, are they supposed to be this high? And I'm like, yeah. yes. <laughs> but, yes but that wasn't the look that, that they wanted. Yeah. They, they, they preferred them to have more of a, a natural saggy look. So... Look at the afters. Make sure that's a look you want. And if it's not, then then tell your surgeon, hey, I prefer them to be a little bit saggier. And we can make that happen too. Totally. I will grumble the whole time. <laughs> yeah. But I, but we can do it. Totally. It's uh, there. Every surgeon has a look. Uh, you know, we. I was talking about it today. I was doing a, a piece for a, a, a television show about you know the natural lift and talking about facelifts. And I just said, you know, my, my patients don't want to look like aliens. My patients don't want their facelift to be obvious. There are patients that want their facelift yeah. to be obvious. Because it's a look. They want that. Yeah. The, the mantis lift is real and they want that. And my patients don't want that. My patients want no one to know that they've had a facelift. They want to look very beautiful and healthy and rejuvenated, but they don't want that I have had a facelift look. And with breast implants, it's the same thing. I, you got to go where the money is. It's on the website. You can't do Instagram. I can't put breasts on my Instagram anymore because my Instagram uh, gets, uh, my account gets shadow banned and then it gets 
uh, sidelined and then I get all these like messages like, you know, you're showing, you know, pornography on your Instagram. This is against the community guidelines. I'm like, they're medical photos. I put big purple hearts over <laughs> the nipple areola or complexes and it doesn't matter. They like, I cannot even put breast implants on hmm. my Instagram anymore. Whereas like, if you look at some of these Instagram models, they're basically they're, showing everything. They're yeah. naked. You yeah. know, they are like, they have like a string I know. up the crack of their <laughs> butt and like two, two pieces of like, you know, two gummy bears in front of their nipples. And they're like, don't worry, I'm not naked. I'm, I've got it all covered. And it's like, why am I getting banned? And yet these, you know, quote unquote influencers can show like whatever they want. So I haven't figured that out. You need Go a, to the website. You need an OnlyFans account for your breast implant. Uh, <laughs> for your before uh, and after. Now we're talking. <laughs> so I can get paid for my work. Now you're, well, you know, I bet my patients would be okay with that if they got some of the royalties on yeah, that yeah, deal. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know how to do it other than the, my website seems to be cool. You know, Google still lists my website, so you can go and look at that and look at the before and afters there. But social media, I'm, I'm, I've checked out on on body photos. It just doesn't, hmm. can't do it. I mean, the amount of like hate that I get from from the gram is pretty rough. I mean, I'm just like, but but wait, you know, like what about this? I I, I literally sit there and go like, excuse me, this influencer is naked. Like this is like you can see everything, and I have like a. You know, in front of a blue background, like, are you kidding? And they're like, oh, you've violated our community guidelines. This is, you know, your your account's banned for 30 days and you can't, I can't advertise on Instagram anymore. Like it's been hmm. totally like clobbered by the fact that I put breasts on there. Has that happened to your account? No. But you put breasts on your account. Yeah. What's the deal? Because I'm a female. Ah. Um, yeah. Canceled. <laughs> It's the white you're, male. You're a white male. <laughs> how dare you? I'm hosed. How dare you? But anyways. That's, that's not, how it goes. That's not here or there. All right. Well, anyway, so go to the website, <laughs> check it out. Understand that remove and replace is a different operation. Anything else on that? No, I think that's it. I do want to say that we have done many podcasts about the aspects of remove and replace that you should listen to. We've done one on inframammary fold reconstruction, which is really a great, that's a great podcast if you are looking at remove and replace. And uh, we've done, you know, implant size. We've done capsular contracture. Capsular contracture. Mastopexy augmentation. Removal without putting in new implants. That's a whole nother consideration too. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, check it out. Go, go back, you know, scroll back on some of our episodes. You'll find them. And this is the Beverly Hills Plastic Surgery Podcast coming to you from the 90210. Oh.